Gonna be jumping in the deep end of it today. Well, a little bit. Don't worry about it. We'll get through it together. We've already covered the basics of the interface and how a NIF file is structured. So let's talk about how to add simple animations from within NIF scope itself. I know when I first started modding, there wasn't a whole lot of noob friendly information around and I had to learn everything the hard way. Granted, I already knew quite a bit about 3D and 3D animation, so that helped a bit. What we're going to be doing here today is taking a look at this NIF file here. I'm sure you all know and love by now. And we're going to make it spin. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I know, I know. Not only that, we're going to be plugging in a custom Havoc behavior file and learning how to animate it using simple papyrus script commands. First thing we want to do is come up to view, tick animations, that'll play some playback uh, functions up here. We're going to use later to make sure we've plugged everything in correctly. Uh, to accomplish this task, we're going to need to learn a few more block types. The two main ones are going to be plugged into the root knee node right here. One of them is an extra data list. The other one's a controller. So just going to add an extra slot to this data list. And then we have to save the file to open up that slot. Good. So we'll go right click block insert. Now the first one is called BS behavior graph extra data. So I'm just going to click on that and that'll place it up top here. And the next one is called NI controller manager, which is right here. Good. So we've got our two main blocks. So let's go ahead and plug them in. So one and zero. There we go. You can see they're a bit jumbled there. So in a case like this, it might be a good idea to come up here and go spell sanitize reorder blocks. That'll order everything correctly and makes everything look real nice. We're also going to need to go into the BSX flags section and tick enable animation so this animation actually plays. Okay, so concerning this BS behavior graph extra data block, this isn't something we used to require back in the days of Fallout 3 in New Vegas. Um, came in with the introduction of using Havoc behavior files uh, with Skyrim. So um, now we need one of these babies. And we're going to quickly name it. It's going to be named BGED, stands for Behavior Graph Extra Data. Just like the BSX flags node needs to be named BSX, this one needs to be named BGED. So make sure you name them correctly like that. And what you do with this node is you plug in the file path to the Havoc behavior file that you're using for this uh, animation. Um, it's usually located in your meshes folder. However, when you type in the file path here, you don't need to type in meshes. You just type in the next directory up. So in this case, it's going to be unique behavior slash simple anim slash one state dot hkx. Now, if you watched my previous video on working with behavior files, you'll know that the file we're referencing here is not the file that we edit and add all our animation data into. This is just a file that references two other files that'll come along with this one. We're not going to worry about control space skeleton. We're just going to leave that at default because we're not going to be using a skeleton to control this animation, though I have used skeletal systems in the past with my uh, book mods that I did for Fallout 3 and New Vegas, as well as the comic book resource that I did for New Vegas. They all used skeletal animations to uh, turn the pages and such. Uh, I don't know if we'll get into skeleton animations in the future. I've heard conflicting things about it not really being supported as of yet uh, due to the nature of Havoc animations. But uh, we'll see, we'll see. Next, we're going to set up the NI Controller Manager, which is going to house all of our animation information. So quite an important block and a lot's going to be going on in here. 
but before we edit any of the parameters, we need to create three more blocks that we're going to be plugging into this guy here. First one we're going to be creating is called an NI multi-target transform controller. Next, we're going to need an NI controller sequence. And finally, NI default AV object palette. Okay, good. So if we just open up our hierarchy and go to the controller manager, the first block, the multi-target transform controller goes in the next controller section. So just plug that in. Then the controller sequences go down here near the bottom. We need to add a slot to the controller sequences list. Again, we've got to save the file to open up that slot and then we'll plug it in. And the object palette goes down in the object palette section. Cool. Now I'm just going to reorder these blocks again because I like keeping things neat. All right, good. First thing we're going to need to edit is the flag section. I like to type these in manually and keep with the numbering conventions of the game that I'm currently working on. In this case, it's Fallout 4. If we click on the little flag, you can see it's ticked the active box as well as set the loop mode to clamp. If I'd have done this manually, I would have gotten a different number, I think 12 or something like that. So sticking with the numbering conventions of the game is probably going to be better in the long run. Now, as for the frequency, phase, start time, stop time, these are going to be set in here as well as the multi-target transform controller and the controller sequence. The place they really matter is the controller sequence. In here, they're not going to have too much of an influence, but I will just set them up how they're normally set up, uh, which is set the frequency to 1, phase will be 0. For start and stop time, you're going to have to type in using the arrow brackets. You'll go float max for start time and float min. I'm not entirely sure why they're set up this way, but um, yeah, it makes more sense in my head to have start time set to float min and stop time to float max, but whatever. Just going to accept this and uh, move on. Target. We're going to set that to zero, which is the root node. So that'll target the root node and try to find whatever other nodes we're referencing from within there. Let's see, we're not going to touch cumulative and that looks like everything else is already set up. Concerning the NI multi-target transform controller, it's going to be set up fairly similarly to the controller manager with a few minor differences. Uh, as for the first section, next controller, not going to worry about that since we're not going to have another controller plugged into this guy here. Flags, we need to set that to 108. If we click the flag icon, you can see it's set up pretty much the same as before, but with a different number. I feel like it's always best to keep with the uh, default numbering conventions of the game you're working on. So we're just going to do that and not question things so much. Frequency, we'll set that to 1. Again, start and stop time as before. We're going to use the arrow brackets, float max, and float min. Target, again, I'm going to target the root node. In this case, it's 0. I'm going to have one extra target. So I'll add that and update my target list. Of course, we're going to save our game to open up that slot. Now, what I'm going to be targeting here is this BS try shape block, which is the mesh itself. I'm not going to be targeting the root node and animating that. I'm going to be animating the mesh, which is a child of the root node. So I'll just type that in. And if you have multiple objects you want to animate the position, rotation, or scale of, you would add them all to this extra targets list.